Hi Hyrians, some of you may know that there are some missable items in Zelda Breath of the Wild. Today, we're going to talk about those items but also some other things that many players may miss. There are some weapons and shields that you can't get once again after you lose it, but there are also some special modded weapons with limited opportunities to get them, and also some special pictures that you can forget if you want to have some great pictures. I'm Nico, and I'm a Zelda collector. I try to get everything possible in Zelda games, and I try to help Zelda players find them too. So if you need some help finding anything, or you need some Zelda tutorials, consider subscribing, or at least checking out the channel. Before we get into anything, one important aspect that needs to be mentioned is the hidden experience points system in Breath of the Wild. Link gains experience points after each enemy he defeats. And the reason why this is important is because after Link gains a certain amount of experience points, certain things in the game will not be achievable. And many of the things mentioned in this video all depend on Link's experience points. There's so many details to the system, but to sum it up, enemies will upgrade in color the more experience points Link gets from defeating enemies. And also, the weapons they carry and the weapons you find in chests will also have certain modifications depending on how much experience points Link gets. If you're really into numbers, you can check the link in the description explaining in detail all the numbers involving this experience point system. And also, Croton has a great video explaining all of this. Link in the description. But now, let me tell you all the things that you can miss, but also all the things people think they can miss, but they're actually hidden somewhere. First, let's talk about the weapons that most people talk about, then I will talk about some special weapons that most people don't talk about. Lionel Spear, Lionel Crusher, Mighty Lionel Spear, Mighty Lionel Crusher, Forest Dweller Sword, Kite Shield. After obtaining all of these weapons from their designated locations, you can't get them again after losing or breaking them. There are three Kite Shields in Normal Mode and four in Master Mode. First, in the Skull Cave in the Snow Field. Second, up the Waterfall of the Hebra Plunge. The third one is obtained from Selmy's Shield Surfing minigame if you finish the race between 2 minutes and 5 seconds and 2 minutes and 20 seconds. If you want to know all the shields you can get from Selmy, how to get them, and the best routes for the shield surfing, check the card in the corner or the link in the description for my video on that. And the fourth kite shield, which is only in master mode, is on top of a floating platform by the Hebra Falls. For the Forest Dweller Sword, there are 4 in Normal Mode and 5 in Master Mode. There's a treasure under the bridge in Farin. Another one in some ruins in Central Hyrule. The third is by the shrine at the end of the Test of the Woods quest. The fourth is from the Test of Woods quest. You can only keep this sword if it's the first time you do this quest and you don't have a Forest Dweller sword already. This quest is on the northeastern side of the Korok Forest. And the fifth one is in Master Mode on top of some floating platforms south of the Woodland Tower. Now for the Lionel Spear and Crusher, and the Mighty Lionel Spear and Crusher. The reason they are missable is because of the experience point system that I mentioned earlier. In Normal Mode, only Red Lionels carry Lionel Spears and Crushers, and in Master Mode, only Blue Ones carry them. These are the locations for those Lionels. Feel free to take a screenshot, or just Google it yourself. 
Once you defeat a certain number of enemies, Link will gain experience points, and those Lynels will upgrade and no longer carry those weapons. And this also applies for the Mighty Lynel Crusher and Spear, in which the Blue Lynels carry them in Normal Mode and the White Lynels carry them in Master Mode. The location for these Lynels are the same as the ones before. Feel free to take a screenshot or again, Google it yourself. Now if you're curious why not the Lionel Bows, Shields and Swords, it's because the Lionel by the Zora's Domain will always carry a Lionel Sword, Shield and Bow, and there's a Lionel in Hyrule Castle that will always carry a Mighty Lionel Sword, Shield and Bow. However, when you defeat that Lionel, they won't drop their weapons, but for whatever reason, if you save and reload before defeating them, they will drop their weapons. One note about the Lionel Spear, in Master Mode, there is one Lizalfos on a platform by the South Akala Lake that carries the Lionel Spear. Now let's talk about some special weapons you can miss. There are two useful ones and one for collection purposes. But first, let me explain. Like I mentioned earlier, after you defeat a certain number of enemies, Link will gain experience points and the enemies will upgrade. This also applies to the weapons and the modifiers for those weapons. For example, after defeating enough enemies, the Lizzle Boomerang will have a chance to upgrade with the white modifier like Critical Hit, then a chance to upgrade with the yellow modifier like Long Throw and Attack Up. Then, after you defeat more enemies, if you find that Lizzle Boomerang again, it can upgrade to a Lizzle Forked Boomerang, which again can also upgrade to a white and yellow modifier. Then again, upgrade to a Lizal Tri Boomerang with the same modifiers. Another note, you can only get weapons with modifiers from treasure chests and high level enemies. So if you want to collect a certain weapon with a modifier, that weapon may no longer be available after a certain point in the game. For example, if you want a Hunter Shield with a Durability Up Plus or the Highest Shield Guard Up, there is only one spare one that responds every Blood Moon and that's in the North Labyrinth in Hebra. And you can get another one at Selmy Shield Surfing Game, but there is only one Hunter Shield that's in a treasure chest, and that's by the Linewu Tower. So in order to get the shield with the highest durability and keep it, you have to wait until you're further in the game than say before opening the chest, and keep reloading until you get the one you want. If you've opened this chest early, you will no longer be able to get this shield again. So if you want a specific weapon, shield, or bow with a special modifier, you have limited tries to get them. There are some that are collectible, like the missable Lionel Crusher with the highest attack, or maybe you want to collect all shields with yellow modifiers. Or simply your favorite weapon with critical hit since critical hit disappears after a while. The choice is yours, but there are three specific weapons that I would like to mention. First, what most people know is the most important one is the Hylian Shield with Shield Guard Up or Durability Up Plus. First of all, you get the shield from Hyrule Castle in the lockup. The easiest way I can explain to get this is from the entrance, jump left, go in the cave, follow along the path all the way until you get into the lockup, then turn left. You have to fight a Stalnox for the treasure to appear. Now save the game before opening the chest, then keep reloading until you get the one you want. If the shield isn't modding to the modification you want, you probably need to get further in the game. So leave it alone and move on. Come back later. My recommendation is to get the durability up one because you can transfer its durability to other shields using the durability transfer glitch and also duplicate it. Check the card in the corner or the link in the description on how to do this glitch. Having the shield guard up 54 makes the shield total 144 which is also cool but there's no real reason to have a high shield guard. If you want to know how the shield guard works, Crotown also has a video on this, link in the description. 
And if you want to know a long glitch that allows you to keep both Hylian shields, Cleric has a video on that too. Link in the description. The second weapon deals the highest attack on Taluses. If you weren't aware from my strongest weapons video, there's certain weapons that can do extra damage to Taluses, and the one that does the most is the Iron Sledgehammer with attack up. The Sledgehammer does 4 times the damage of the hammer's attack. The highest attack damage the Iron Sledgehammer can be is 34, making the damage to Taluses 136. There are sledgehammers all over Hyrule, especially in all the towns, but to get a modded one, there are only 4 treasure chests and 5 in master mode. There is another on Eventide Island, but I guess it's because it's Eventide, the hammer cannot be modded. There's one chest on top of the northern part of Dueling Peaks. The second is behind the wall of Fort Hateno. And the third and fourth are on the same shrine. The shrine is in the woodland stable and happens to be one of the top annoying shrines. Enjoy it. And the fifth treasure in master mode is on a platform east of the Great Plateau at the beginning of the Proxim Bridge. And the final special weapon, it's not that special but it just feels really rare, and that's the Forest Dweller Bow with a 5 shot burst. There are 9 treasure chests that carry the Forest Dweller's Bow so we have a few chances to get it. The reason this bow may be good later on is because it shoots 5 shots, but also it doesn't attract lightning like Lionel's bows do. Now for some special Hyrule Compendium pictures. Yes, you can buy them from Simon, but there are some you might want to get good pictures like this one. Or earned pictures. And I'd like to share which pictures you cannot take after you've missed the opportunity. But also there are some pictures that you probably didn't think about missing. And also there are some pictures that you thought you can't find anymore, but there are some places to find them. I'll share that too. First, the obvious ones. Koga and Sentry. When you fight Koga, that's the only time you will see him. So if you want a cool picture of him, when you fight him, that's the only time you can do it. And sentries, they appear during the climb up Death Mountain with Yunobo. There isn't much cool pictures you can take, but if you want a custom picture, that's the only time you can do it. There's also the Blight Ganons. After you defeat them, you cannot take pictures of them again, unless you have the DLC in which you fight them again in the Champion's Ballad. Another monster you can miss is the Blue Lionel because of the monster upgrades. Next, this all applies for weapons that are missable, like I mentioned earlier. Lionel Spear in normal mode, Lionel Crusher, Mighty Lionel Spear, Mighty Lionel Crusher, Forest Dweller Sword, and the Kite Shield. Now there are some enemies you may think they are gone towards the end of the game, but they are actually hiding somewhere in Hyrule. The Red Bokoblin, south of the Great Plateau. Green Lizalfos, east of Varuda. Red Moblin in a spring on the northwestmost part of the map. Ice Wiz robe at the Forgotten Temple. Fire Wiz robe east of the Skull Shrine in North Akala. And the Electric Wiz robe on the south part of Hyrule. And finally, there are some companion pictures that can be taken later in the game, but if you want special specific ones, you may lose your opportunity. Let me explain. The first one I wanted to mention is the Obliterator. Yes, the Obliterator is in the Shrine of Resurrection, but if you want to take a picture with Link holding it, 
You can only do that during the Champion's Ballad quest. After you've completed the Champion's Ballad, the Obliterator cannot be taken from the Shrine of Resurrection. The next Hyrule Companion picture you may want, but not have thought about it, is the Treasure Chest. Even if you opened all the Treasure Chests in Hyrule, there are some Treasure Chests on Eventide Island, and you can get Metal Chests from Amiibo. However, there's two special treasure chests that you can miss the opportunity to take great pictures of, and they are the Xenoblade Chronicles chests from the DLC, and also the DLC treasures. As a matter of fact, this is one of my favorite pictures that I've taken. And finally, not a big deal, but the Master Sword in the pedestal in the Master Trials makes a pretty cool picture. There's one more very special thing, or at least one more thing that I thought about, that you can miss. And that is to be able to do the Memory Storage glitch which allows you to start a new game with almost any weapon you want, like the Bow of Light. One of the things you have to have in order to do this glitch is to have at least one incomplete side quest. So if you have all the side quests done, you cannot do this glitch. If you want to learn how to do this glitch, I recommend this video from Cleric. Link in the description. I'm sure there are many other things that you can miss in the game that I didn't mention or I didn't even think about. For example, maybe you wanted to have a cool picture with a Sheikah monk. If you have some other ideas, feel free to let us know in the comments because I'm curious to know what you've thought about. Thank you so so much for watching, I hope you found this interesting and or entertaining. If you want more Zelda content, I hope you consider subscribing or at least checking out the channel. Thank you so much again, and I'll see you next time!